if the universe is 12 billion light years across, how come we got stars that are older than that? If your body says no and you walk anyway, there's a very high chance you will be burned. I'm about to take you on a tour of Hollywood that you will never see anywhere else. From the boundaries of the universe to the depth of your soul, embark on a journey through the unknown and unexplained as we explore mysteries, magic, and miracles. Hello and welcome, I'm Patrick McNee. Today we'll see how people walk on fire without getting burned. And we'll try to sort out some of Hollywood's sordid tales. But first, we'll take a look at stargazing. Our search for answers in the universe begins with the stars. And the more we find out about them, the more involved the mystery becomes. Our search for answers in the universe begins with the stars, and the more we find out about it, the more involved the mystery becomes. On a clear night, approximately 6,000 stars can be seen with the naked eye, but there are millions of stars in the Milky Way. Ivan Dreyer studies astronomy and applies his knowledge in his daily work. We wanted to know what causes that glittering display of lights in the dark sky. A star is like a uh, hundred million hydrogen bombs that continuously explode. It's extremely hot and extremely bright. And our sun is the closest star. Stars have planets rotating around them, varying from a dull, constant circling to whirlwind spins. Planets are often confused to stars because they appear as very bright points of light in the sky. The reason we know that they're not stars is that they move, and they move very rapidly among the stars. There are as many galaxies in the universe as there are stars in the sky. There are approximately 200 billion galaxies that are known to exist in the known universe. The universe actually is finite, and it is now believed to be about 12 billion years old. New generation space telescopes are now being designed that might enable us to see the actual edge of the universe, which is also, in fact, the beginning of the universe. With all this information, new mysteries come to light. The latest measurements from the Hubble Space Telescope reveal that the universe is approximately 12 billion years old. However, there are stars in the universe that are known to be older than that. So the question naturally arises, well, if the universe is 12 billion light years across, how come we got stars that are older than that? All these are still issues to be answered. We think we know the answers, and then all of a sudden, new measurements come along and blow everything to hell. Stargazing is something that mankind has been fascinated with since the very beginning. This path that the sun takes through the stars is called the ecliptic. The 12 constellations that lie along the ecliptic form the zodiac, Taurus, the bull, Aries, the ram, Gemini, the twins. All these patterns can be seen as the sun moves through certain constellations, creating what we know as the zodiacal constellations. Our sun, like any other star, is constantly changing. A star can start out normally and uh, ultimately evolve into a red giant, which means that it's going to expand. It will eventually expand so widely that it will engulf the planets surrounding it, including planet Earth. Any life then on Earth would have to move into the outer solar system to find a safe place. At that time, as a matter of fact, the icy moons of Jupiter will be inhabitable. But the good news is it's probably four and a half billion years away. From planet Earth, we see stars and planets as little specks of light against a dark sky. But how does Earth appear from the universe? If you were standing on Mars looking back toward the sun, uh, you would see a very bright blue dot in the sky that looked like a very bright blue star, and that would be our Earth. To everyone, a star signifies something different. We are all familiar with the phrase, wish upon a star. Ivan had his own explanation. I think people wish upon a star because stars are very steadfast. They're always there. They've been there 
uh, for thousands of years. And so when you want to count on something being there, a star is something good to wish on. In a recent episode, we investigated the possibility of a UFO cover-up in Roswell, New Mexico. The theory that a UFO crashed in this desert community has sparked heated debates for half a century. The United States Air Force issued this official response. All evidence dismisses the possibility of an airplane crash, a missile crash, a nuclear accident, and an extraterrestrial craft. There is no evidence in the military hierarchy in the July 1947 message traffic, including classified traffic, that would suspect an unknown alien spacecraft had crashed in Roswell. The daughter of W.W. Brazell, the rancher who discovered the wreckage, states that the debris looked like pieces of a large balloon with broken pieces of wood resembling kite sticks attached to whitish tape with flower designs. The wreckage at General Ramey's press conference showing a balloon was in fact the actual debris from the crash site and not a substitute. The United States Air Force has officially closed the Roswell incident for good. But with any good mystery, many will continue to wonder who done it. Firewalkers have stumped scientists for centuries. How can a person walk across hot coals reaching 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit without burning their flesh off? <laughs> Whether their skin is spared by chanting, meditation, or the grace of God, today the art of firewalking is practiced to a high degree. Since the first spark, fire has been essential to our lives. Fire stands for power, but in order to conquer that power, we must first conquer our fears. Is fire walking a trick, or is it truly mind over matter? Fire walking has been practiced universally from ancient times until the present. In many cultures, the purpose is for healing, but fire walking is also used as a means of celebration, purification, and personal growth. Heather Ash a firewalk instructor from Davis, California, claims firewalking has changed her life dramatically. Firewalking is basically very simple. It's building a big fire, waiting a couple hours for it to burn down to get nice, good-sized coals, and then walking across it with bare feet. Since firewalking came to the United States, it has become more and more popular. So why do people do it? People are really searching for more meaning in their life and more spirit, and it makes you realize how much magic there is in the world in a lot of ways. Finding your limits, then surpassing them, is what fire walking is all about. If you focus on fear, for example, you naturally draw fear into your life. We really invite people to look at what it is they're afraid of. What's the worst thing that can happen to you when you walk across the fire? And then we say, okay, that's what you're afraid of, now let it go. And now look at Let's focus on what you want in your life. What do you want to create? You know, Heather, I think most people, when they, uh, think about fire walking, they honestly believe there's some kind of trick involved. You mm -hmm. put something on the bottom of the feet. Is that true? No, it's not. Um, we basically have people take their shoes and socks off, and that's it. You just go straight from your shoes to the fire. If you're walking and something clicks and you concentrate more on the fire and getting mm -hmm. burned than what you should be, mm -hmm. is there any out? What do you do at that point? Um, I say keep going, because once you've taken that first step, you've committed. down, 
you say get prepared. What, what are we going to do? Are we going to meditate or chant? Tell me what the procedure is here. Well, normally if we were teaching a workshop, we'd be doing about four hours of preparation, everything from singing to lecturing. Um, but tonight, since we've all walked before, we're just going to probably do a lot of internal work individually. So, Warren, are you a student? Are you a, a student walker? Is that what we call no, you? This is my third time that I've been to one, so I, I guess that makes me a student. Yeah. The other participants play a vital role in the fire walk. While you can do it alone, it is not recommended. A lot of times what we'll do is we'll have drumming and we'll have chanting going on. And it's not, and not something that you need at all, but it is really helpful to feel the, the support of the group. Like you can do this tonight? You know, it's always you never know until the fire's raked out, until you stand in front of it. I never have any idea, and no matter I mean I've walked over a hundred times and I still never know. Ooh, it's hot here. It's hot. Warren, how are you feeling about this? Pretty good so far. Hi. Pretty calm. Are you going? Go, 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 go. He's going! believe is there is this energy in everything and so what we're doing when we fire walk is raising the energy in our own bodies to walk across the fire to match the energy of the fire we've been told since we were really really young that fire burns and so to watch someone's bare feet walking across coals your brain kind of goes wait a minute you can't do that the main lesson with fire walking is to listen to your intuition when people come to a fire walk we, we tell them you're not here to walk on fire, you're, you're here to learn how to listen to your intuition. And if your intuition, if your body says yes, then you'll walk and you won't get burned. If your body says no and you walk anyway, there's a very high chance you will be burned. I admit, I was skeptical up until the last minute, assuming there must be a trick involved. But I tried it myself. And look, yeah. the so bottoms of our feet are all the proof you need. I've been told it's physically impossible to do this. Then. Yeah. They say that seeing is believing and maybe doing it makes it even more believable. Walking on fire is something I never thought anyone would do, let alone me. But once you do, you know that the power of the mind is an absolute unbelievable thing. Hollywood, the land of fame, fortune, and golden opportunities. This is where dreams come true for a few lucky individuals. But there is another side of Hollywood filled with mystery, scandal, and murder. Hollywood, the land of fame, fortune, and the movies. Amongst a sea of public adoration, movie stars were living the lives of royalty, from their posh limousines to their luxuriant Beverly Hills mansions. But there is a darker side. You know, they say that every event has a story behind it. Well, that's especially true here in Hollywood, where the strangest things occur, more so than any other place in the world. Right now on Hollywood Boulevard, which was the mecca and the dream place back in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, where every young starlet and young guy would come out and hopefully become that next Clark Gable or Cary Grant or Lana Turner. I'm about to take you on a tour of Hollywood that you will never see anywhere else, and a tour that most patrons of Hollywood would prefer you not see. The death of any celebrity is bound to affect grief-stricken fans. Some go as far as suicide to be with their star. One star's death in 1926 was so catastrophic 
that it's still clouded by mystery to this very day. Now I'll show you one of the most famous graves of all time. Um, now we're not allowed in here, but I had to show this to you anyway. Rudolf Valentino. As you can see, it's in mint condition. It's visited every day by the lady in black. The lady in black, we don't know who she is. I can tell you a couple of years ago when I came by here to visit Rudolph, sort of a hero of mine, I saw the lady in black. I actually saw the lady in black leave flowers and she actually left a poem taped up here. It was remarkable. Anyway, she had been here today. She left flowers here. And if you feel the plaque, the plaque is nice and smooth, but it's, it's, it's kind of oily, like she cleaned it with something. So it's very well taken care of. Rudolph Valentino died in 1926 at the age of 31 from peritonitis. He was at the top of his form. As a matter of fact, his death probably saved his career. With the advent of talking pictures in 1927, Valentino's career probably would never have survived. His death caused widespread pandemonium throughout the world. The mob couldn't be contained. After some order was restored during his wake in New York, he was transported back to Hollywood for the funeral. One of the most intriguing mysteries in Hollywood revolves around the former Chateau Elise Hotel, at one time the most beautiful hotel in Hollywood. In 1929, William Randolph Hearst built this as a home for the widow of producer Tom Ince. At the time, Hearst was madly in love with actress Marion Davies. She was in turn having an affair with Charlie Chaplin, which infuriated Hearst greatly. Rumor has it that he took drastic action, one that would prove costly. So it happened one night in 1924 aboard a yacht. Hearst saw Chaplin and Marion Davies, or who he thought he saw Chaplin there. And it turns out it was Ince. He shot him and killed him. So out of remorse, he built this hotel, which was labeled the most beautiful hotel in Hollywood, the Chateau Elise. And this is it. It stands as a vivid memory of a tragic accident, which to this day, has never been officially solved. One of the most notorious cases ever to hit Hollywood was the Fatty Arbuckle story. Now, in 1921, Fatty Arbuckle hosted a party, a wild sex party, at a San Francisco hotel. One of his guests was Virginia Rapp. You probably wish she never attended that party because she ended up dead. Arbuckle was accused of violently abusing her and then killing her. Though later acquitted, he was never able to shake the public disdain. He died broke and forgotten 12 years later. Many still wonder what really happened that tragic night, 1921. He was the most popular hero to all kids growing up in the 50s. And to them, actor George Reeves was the Man of Steel. No, I don't believe it. You will, Blinky, you will. Just wasting your ammunition, Blinky. Sit down. As Superman, Reeves was invincible. But that was not to be the case. It was on June 16th, 1959. It's the day Superman died. Right there. The media had a field day with the news of Reeves' death. There were those who just couldn't believe he would commit suicide. His death certificate clearly states a possible suicide. Newspapers reported he was despondent over being Superman for so long and that he couldn't get work. Police reports indicate Reeves' fiance, Lenore Lemon, who was there at the time, claimed she commented that he was going to get a gun out and shoot himself. Moments later, the shot was heard. But shortly before his death, this promotional film was made in Reeves' backyard. Clearly, this was a man in the best shape of his life. He had just learned Superman was renewed for another season and that he was about to marry the woman he loved. His mother hired a private detective to investigate his death. His conclusion was that George Reeves was, in fact, murdered. She kept his body on ice to prove to the world that he didn't commit suicide. She, however, died six months later, and Reeves' body was cremated. To this day, the authorities are investigating all possible motives to finally end this mystery. In any event, George Reeves will forever live on in reruns as Superman. Sex, scandal, 
death and Hollywood. Peoria, it's not, nor is it Sin City. This is just a little community of people that has the focus of the world on them. Ever since he uttered the words, I never drink wine, Bela Lugosi became immortalized as the nocturnal Count Dracula. The years following the 1931 release of Dracula proved unkind to the talented actor. Lugosi never escaped the image of Count Dracula. In 1956, Bela Lugosi died, broke and forgotten, in a shabby one-bedroom apartment. His last request was that he be buried in his original Dracula costume forever. After all, he may be bad. Sometimes, truth is stranger than fiction. I'm Patrick McNee. Join me next time for more mysteries, magic, and miracles. mystery becomes. On a clear night, approximately 6,000 stars can be seen with the naked eye, but there are millions of stars in the Milky Way. Ivan Dreyer studies astronomy and applies his knowledge in his daily work. We wanted to know what causes that glittering display of lights in the dark sky. A star is like a uh, hundred million hydrogen bombs that continuously explode. If the universe is 12 billion light years across, how come we got stars that are older than that? If your body says no and you walk anyway, there's a very high chance you will be burned. I'm about to take you on a tour of Hollywood that you will never see anywhere else. From the boundaries of the universe to the depth of your soul, Embark on a journey through the unknown and unexplained as we explore mysteries, magic, and miracles. Hello and welcome. I'm Patrick McNee. Today we'll see how people walk on fire without getting burned. And we'll try to sort out some of Hollywood's sordid tales. It's extremely hot and extremely bright. And our sun is the closest star. Stars have planets rotating around them, varying from a dull, constant circling to whirlwind spins. Planets are often confused to stars because they appear as very bright points of light in the sky. The reason we know that they're not stars is that they move, and they move very rapidly among the stars. But first, we'll take a look at stargazing. Our search for answers in the universe begins with the stars. And the more we find out about them, the more involved the mystery becomes. Our search for answers in the universe begins with the stars. And the more we find out about it, the more involved the... 